Hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to welcome you back to a continuation of our topic uh, called the Kaaba uh, problem. And of course, uh, this is part three of this particular series that we've been doing with uh, the apostate prophet. And uh, last time we talked about the uh, problems with the historicity of Mecca and, of course, in this uh, case, uh, the Kaaba itself, since if Mecca was such a prominent uh, city, then um, a lot of the historical events around that area would have encompassed Mecca, like, for instance, the Romans occupations or at least invasions uh, for the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula never really uh, in include Mecca, even though uh, they were so close to that area. But if it was a prominent city, most likely they would have made their way all the way to Mecca, especially when uh, we hear that it was a a commerce center. I mean, uh, the Romans would have been salivating over that because that means a lot of money for them from taxation, but yet they did not do such a thing at all. That indicates to us that Mecca either didn't exist at that time or wasn't even a prominent city. Even many of the earlier maps did not have Mecca on their radar. So all of these uh, evidence indicates something related to Mecca and the Kaaba in this case. Maybe the Kaaba was there, but it doesn't look like it was a prominent place for people to do their religious visitations and so on and so forth. Well, today's show is no exception. We're going to talk about now the connection or the alleged connection between the Kaaba, Mecca, and Abraham, or the Abrahamic religion all together. Of course, as I stated, with us here virtually in our studios, our friend, the apostate prophet. AP, uh, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and for the research that you're doing and for all these excellent points that you have raised in the last two episodes of this particular series. But I want to turn it over to you to take it from here. Thank you so much, Al. I'm really happy to be to be back here. Uh, we want to dive in back into uh, analyzing the uh, connections, the alleged connections between um, the Kaaba and history, and especially Abrahamic history. We talked about how uh, if we if the, if the Islamic narrative about the Kaaba was true, then we should find some historical traces about this. We want to apply some similar logic and more to also understand one more thing, which is if the Islamic narrative about the Kaaba and about Mecca was true, then we would definitely find traces about this, not just traces. We would find some, we would find the Kaaba and Mecca uh, as a place and an object of huge importance within Abrahamic tradition, Abrahamic scripture, and Abrahamic history. Unfortunately, we don't. Uh, I want to start this with the entire narrative about Abraham. As said, uh, Islam, the Islamic claim is that Abraham built the Kaaba and, uh, upon the instructions of Allah, and he was told to invite mankind to the Kaaba, and people would come from all uh, kinds of distant passes. If this were true, Let's just apply some reasoning to come to the most uh, possible, most reasonable explanation. If this were true, then we would exp we would expect uh, Abraham to have a big connection to the Kaaba, and we would expect uh, the tradition that comes from Abraham, that descends from Abraham, to also highly value the Kaaba. Mm -hmm. Well, we find uh, Abraham within uh, the Bible. We find his history, his tradition there. And uh, to a great extent, Islam actually originally respects the Hebrew tradition, the biblical tradition, which descends from Abraham, because as we know, Islam uh, makes references to the to, to all the Israelites, the biblical prophets, and tell, tells us about how they were rightly guided prophets of Allah and the scriptures were sent by him. It doesn't give us a separate history. It relies on the history of the biblical tradition. And in that history, we find that Abraham, the figure, uh, as it is described in the early history of the Bible, had nothing to do with the region of, uh, of, of, of Arabia, central or southern Arabia. His journey was completely spent far up in the north with lands that have nothing to do with Arabia. Um, and there is no mention of him ever building a place uh, that he would invite all mankind to and that people would, you know, go to pilgrimage to and uh, sacrifice animals and all that. Right. Um, we do not find such a connection at all. Now, some, some Muslims... Uh, want to bring the objection that we do actually find something. Uh, but before we get to that, again, to point out, 
if the Islamic narrative was true, Christians and Jews would highly value the Kaaba and they would have some connection to it over history. It wouldn't just be slightly mentioned, maybe. It would be of great importance and Muslims and uh, Jews and Christians would know about the Kaaba and would uh, travel there. But nobody even knew what a Kaaba is until Islam started to rise and expand. If we look at uh, the Bible, Muslims make certain claims, which are, uh, one of them is that Abraham did build an altar a temple according to the Bible. But this is a very ignorant stance, in fact, because um, in the biblical tradition, it is known that Abraham built several altars. Right. Uh, in fact, there is a, uh, a narrative of, a very significant narrative of the four altars of Abraham, which he built. And if we look at the four altars of Abraham, they have a specific purpose and they also have specific locations that are all around the region of, uh, you know, Jerusalem and the northern parts of this, of the, of the, of the Middle East. Um, there is nothing that is remotely related to uh, the Kaaba, let alone a place of huge uh, significance. Right. There is one issue which Muslims like to bring up, which is that there is apparently a place called the Valley of Baqa, or the, the Valley of Bakka, sorry, in the Bible. And they say this must be referring to Mecca, and it also mentions a house of God there. This must be referring to the Kaaba. But this is also entirely false. Did, did you want to add something? Or? No, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I mean, everything you're saying <laughs> yeah. is just uh, uh, very powerful. Uh, thank you. Well, if we look at this entire claim about the Valley of Becca, we find that uh, this claim of this objection is made, is, it comes from a place of great ignorance or of deception and self-deception. Because if we look into the, the Bible and this supposed valley of Becca, which is supposed to be corresponding with Mecca, we do find a mention of something called valley of Becca, but this is a place of complete insignificance or um, maybe a place that doesn't even exist, maybe a place that is mentioned for metaphorical reasons, for the narrative. Mm -hmm. It is mentioned in Psalms 84, uh, where it says, uh, where it describes from the perspective of the of an author of the Psalms, known as one of the sons of Korah. And uh, he describes the his longing for Zion, for Jerusalem, for the temple, for the house of God. And he describes the beautiful, the beautiful emotions and feelings that you feel when you go to Zion before you appear before the house of God. And it says uh, about the pilgrims who travel to Zion, it says when they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. You know, this is a very lyrical, a very metaphorical explanation of this is a place of weeping. The word literally translates to weeping or to a specific tree known for weeping. And people with joy, when they go to Jerusalem, make this place a place of joy in, instead of hardship. Uh, the funny thing is, when you read the Hebrew text, this place, Valley of Baca, is not called Baca or Becca, it is actually called Baha, which uh, does not even sound similar to Mecca and uh, or to Becca as Muslims want to want to make it. It is Baha. Uh, the word Baha is also mentioned in a different part in the Bible mm -hmm. in uh, Second Samuel where it just describes uh, simply a place uh, where it describes trees during a fight, something of complete insignificance. And, you know, it, it is not a place that is uh, the focus of, of set, the focus of attention, the focus of worship, the center of worship. It is merely a place that plays no further significance, but they use it to uh, just because it seems to sound similar to Mecca in order to uh, make the assertion that the Kaaba and that Mecca are indeed mentioned in the Bible. Further, we find out that uh, Zion in this psalm, as mentioned in different psalms, such as Psalms 87 or 42 or even other psalms, uh, Zion in this case most definitely refers to Jerusalem based on uh, the name of Mount Zion, where the fortress of Jerusalem was, which David conquered, according to the biblical narrative, whereby Zion then became the center, the seat of Israel, the heart of the land of God, who is also described in uh, Psalms 84 as the Lord of armies, where, you know, and, and Zion is the heart, the seat of the house of God, where his people and, and even the animals dwell. 
So, and, you know, uh, I, 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 just to add to this important point that you mentioned, you know, it's interesting that when Muhammad claimed about the Isra and Mi'raj, you know, the, uh, t- uh, the, the journey, uh, first of all, from Mecca to Jerusalem and then the ascension, notice how he did it. He had to go to Jerusalem, not doing it from Mecca. Why didn't he ascend from Mecca, for instance? Well, because up until that time, he was trying to still please the Jews according to the traditional narrative. It was after this event that somehow Allah decided to change the direction of Qibla, obviously. That's what the Quran says. The Quran even is silent, telling us which direction they used to pray towards and which new direction they're praying for, uh, uh, you know, also towards now. We're just assuming it was Jerusalem and now it's Mecca but it's silent when it comes to the Quran about those particular names. Absolutely right. Uh, according to the narrative, uh, Muhammad f- flies on his flying uh, horse donkey to uh, Jerusalem, to the temple in Jerusalem, and then uh, ascends from there to heaven. So that place is so significant. Mm-hmm. has nothing to do with, with, with Kaaba, with Mecca, which later came into the picture as the center of Islam. Um, there is one more thing which one, which needs to be pointed out, which is uh, something that Muslims appeal to within the Bible known as the desert of Paran. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Muslims try to say, Muslim apologists try to say that this uh, refers to Arabia or to Mecca. And they try to say, therefore, uh, you know, Mecca is mentioned uh, in the Bible. But again, this is a very strange objection because the uh, desert of Paran merely happens to be a place that is mentioned in the Bible because it plays some significance where because it is a place that people rest and that people pass through, not a place where people go to the center of worship. It is mentioned in uh, Genesis. Uh, it is mentioned in Exodus and Deuteronomy as a place where uh, that that people that the people of Moses uh, rest and uh, you know build their tents before they move on. It is mentioned as a place that is uh, close to Egypt. It is placed as is mentioned as a place that uh, people pass through when they go from uh, Edom. Which is right there in the re- in the region, you know, in in Israel to Egypt. So that that is very clear in the in the biblical context that um, that during a war, the Edomites flee from uh, from Edom to the desert of Paran and then from there to Egypt. And it's very unreasonable to assume that the desert of Paran would then be referring to the the, the, the southern Arabian regions of the Hejaz and around Mecca. It is merely a place that, looking at all the names mentioned together with Paran, are up there right next to uh, Jerusalem and the Holy Lands and uh, and all that. Mount Seir is there, Kadesh is there. These are all names, Laban, Tophel, Hazaroth, Dizahab, all places that are associated with that region, mentioned together with, with Paran. So, um, again, as we can see, there is no connection, uh, there is no place that Kaaba has within biblical scripture, within biblical tradition, even if the Kaaba was mentioned or even if Mecca was mentioned as a place that appears somewhere within these books that wouldn't even be significant, but not even that happens. We would expect that this is a center of worship because it matters to Abraham because that's what Allah, what God makes Abraham do. And we would expect that the Jews and the Christians would care about this place, would have a connection to this place. But evidently, we see that they have no connection to this at all. And if we figure out in the end that the Kaaba does not play a significant role in Abrahamic religion, that the Kaaba does not fit into monotheistic Abrahamic religion, then we will find out that the Islamic claims about the Kaaba are false and that the Kaaba is merely a pagan adoption into Islam, which is a very, very strong argument to render Islam false. That's and, correct. Yeah, that's correct. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, these are uh, excellent points, very strong points. Uh, I mean, Uh, From a historical standpoint, I mean, we have enough archaeological evidence to support the prominence of the Holy Land, of Jerusalem, and the area in general. All of these archaeological discoveries are concentrated there. I mean, there is every day, it's almost like there is something new that is being discovered that either connects the Christianity to the Holy Land or the Jewish traditions to the Holy Land or some of the stories in Old Testament to the Holy Land and many other discoveries. How come we can't find a single thing that ties Abraham to Mecca? Why why did Abraham even uh, choose to go back uh, to the Holy Land and get buried there or he buried his wife? 
I mean, why? I mean, if, if Mecca was such an important thing for him, why didn't he stay there, for instance? I mean, these are the kind of questions we need to ask our Muslim friends, and that's why uh, AP is raising him up and why I am commenting on him, because we want you, my friend, our Muslim friends, to ask yourself these questions. It's one thing to hearsay things, it's another to verify them. You know, so so it's it's I, I like what uh, you know. One of the U.S. presidents, his name is Ronald Reagan, says, "Trust but verify." So it's okay to trust whatever you've been told. Go and verify it yourself. It's a true statement. I mean, it applies to anything in life. I mean, anyone can tell you anything. That doesn't mean it's true. By the way, it is only true when facts support it. You can believe in something, but your belief is futile unless facts support that particular belief. We can say Mecca is prominent. My goodness, I can say my town where I'm living is prominent. I mean, so what? That doesn't mean anything. Uh, then I have to prove it now. Uh, the onus, uh, 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 the burden is on me to have to prove why I am making such claims. In this case, AP, we're talking about so allegedly a deity, God, the God of the universe, uh, who allegedly claims that this city was prominent and that Abraham is connected to it, that the rituals are connected to the Abrahamic religion, that he sent his final prophet from that lineage and so on and so forth. Yet somehow this God elected not to provide a single evidence to prove this. And yet if he is truly the God of the Bible, how come he provided us with rich uh, you know, evidence when it comes to the biblical land, the holy land, and anything else that is mentioned in it? So these are the logical questions that I'm hoping our Muslim friends will ask. Final words to you, Absolutely. AP. I want to add one uh, thing to, to, to end this, which is um, the significance that Mecca and Kaaba play in Islam cannot be uh, possibly overstated. It is a place of great significance. It, is, it matters to the core of Islam. Uh, it, is, it would be absurd to say Islam is true based on different reasons, which is why uh, we will accept its narrative about the Kaaba as true as well, unless it is completely proven wrong by some very significant evidence. Uh, you, can't, you can't do that. It is absurd to go that way. If Islam seems to make certain claims that are uh, that that very much seem false, then you should take those into consideration without thinking, well, but Islam is true from different aspects, which is why this must also be true, or which is why I cannot discount Islam based on this. Finally, we are not making an argument, or at least I am not making an argument from uh, ignorance or from silence. This is not what this is. What we are doing is we are applying some uh, abductive reasoning and saying, hey, if the Islamic narrative about the Kaaba and about Mecca were true, then Mecca would be found in historical sources. We would find archaeological, anthropological evidence. It would matter to the Abraham of the Bible. It would mm -hmm. matter to Abrahamic religion. But it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, and it doesn't. Therefore, the most reasonable explanation is that the Islamic claims are false. This is a very reasonable uh, way to make the point. And I hope this clarifies the situation. Stay away from Islam, everybody. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you so much, AP, as always. And uh, I'm sorry that um, uh, we have to just uh, use a shorter version of this particular series. I know uh, you are doing a lot of research on that. So I'm suggesting that next time maybe we'll continue to unpack uh, this among many other topics that we would love to have you um, uh, share with us. And everyone, Definitely. I hope you've been uh, enjoying this. Uh, feel free to, of course, share it with others within your network. Make sure you subscribe to AP's channel. Again, what is your channel called? The, the Apostate Prophet? Yeah, Apostate Prophet. Apostate Prophet. Uh, subscribe to his channel. Uh, be sure to allow people, uh, uh, make, uh, make people, I should say, be aware of his channel. If you feel also compelled to subscribe to ours, Sierra International, we thank you for that. And we ask, of course, for, for your support. Both of us uh, have Patreon accounts. We, uh, you know, we would much appreciate, uh, you know, uh, any of your support, of course, because uh, believe it or not, this is what we do for a living. Uh, you know, uh, we do not have um, other job. We don't even have an eight to five job, actually. We, we work 24 seven. Sometimes I do things in midnight and I know AP does the same. So so all that to say is we're thankful for your uh, support. Thank, uh, thankful for your partnership with us and uh, be sure you spread the word. And as AP will say, run away from Islam. And as I would say, come to Jesus. With that in mind, thank you, AP. Thank you, everyone. Uh, blessings and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you for watching this video. 
Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel Sierra International and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.